Hey, it's Mel with the Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online and web ready. So today we're back for episode three, and we'll be taking a look at TechSmith's Camtasia Studio screencasting product, which is their screencasting uh, software for the PC and Windows environment. In episode two, we talked about Camtasia, TechSmith's Camtasia for Macintosh. So by the way, if you haven't seen episode one, go ahead and click episode one here, and then here's episode two, and of course you want to make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed as well, okay? So go ahead and take a look at those if you haven't seen them already. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and move forward with, uh, with this. And just a reminder, this is not a training series uh, on how to use these different software. Basically, we're just doing a real simple comparison to answer the question about which screen casting software I use and why I use the ones that I, that I uh, why I recommend the ones that I use. So uh, for Camtasia Studio, uh, I actually had to give it a three out of five um, around the criteria that we're looking at, which isn't to say that overall it can't score higher across all of the basic functionalities and features and so on. But re remember what we said in episode one was that we were going to be looking at, we were going to be comparing these software around these ad more advanced features. So let's take a look at the first one, which is the cursor effects in animation. All right, and I think it does okay here. We gave it a, I gave it a four, and here's why. Uh, basically, here's the cursor within the our test environment is this blue box here. So if I was to scrub forward and back in the timeline, you can kind of almost see where that cursor is. But it turns out we do have some functionality here in Camtasia for Studio to be able to change some of the cursor effects. More specifically, the um, we can highlight it. Okay, so notice now you can see the highlights. You can also change some of the clicks, which you can also do in some of the other, um, some of the software, and you can also give some sound effects to a left click or a right click, all right? So, uh, and then you can also change the size of that mouse cursor, which is all good. So, uh, in that sense, I would probably give it a five, except that in Camtasia for Macintosh, we gave it a five because it had all of these functionalities, plus it also had the ability to be able to do the magnification effect. Uh, which you can't do in Camtasia Studio, which is unfortunate, which I really like. Uh, so overall, I, I think it scores pretty well for the cursor effects. Uh, and while it's not quite up to where Camtasia for Macintosh is, I can't give it a five, I do give it a four for that effect. All right, so let's take a look now at, let's move on to uh, multiple audio and multiple video tracks. Let's look at the video tracks first because I do have an issue with that. And for that, I got to say I'm giving the video tracks thing for Camtasia Studio a two. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Here's why. Uh, I've got a sample video here, all right? And then this is my video one track, which is basically the, the basic screen capture. And associated with that typically is going to be any audio that gets captured with that track. But as it turns out, if you look at under tracks, notice how we only have one video track. That's it. No additional video tracks. Ooh, so that's kind of a, uh, that's kind of a, a little bit of a showstopper actually for me. And then also we only have up to three audio tracks. Now you can actually get a second video track, but that's really all there is, all that you can get. And you do it by virtue of a workaround. And, and here's what I mean is by, even though you only had the one video track, if you notice you have this additional, what's called a pip track, which is a picture in picture track. So the idea is to be able to put video on top of the existing video. So that way we can have effects like pretty much how you're looking at me right now. I'm sitting on top of a second video track, which I'm not editing by, by the way, using Camtasia Studio. I'm editing using Camtasia for Macintosh. So let's take a look at this. How do we do this then? Um, so the trick is to then be able to take this and you want to then simply add it. This is the, the workaround to add it to a picture in picture video track. Now kind of does this little overlay. So let's take a look at this and we can actually resize it. And it used to be you were only limited to certain zones for your video within Camtasia. So here's my little uh, additional video track here. So that's good. So we have a little bit of a workaround, but that's basically it. If you wanted to get in a second video on top of that, you won't be able to, at least uh, not that I'm aware of. So if any TechSmith folks are listening or watching this, feel free to let me know and I'd be happy to make an amendment to this, uh, to this uh, post and add that information in. However, for right now, that's basically all you have. And then the other thing is I can't really animate this. So for instance, if I want to start the track, the video, with this in the upper right corner and then have it smoothly move down to the lower left corner, can't do that either. What I can do is I can do a jump cut. So that's really all you get there. You can't do the little smooth transitions. Like for instance, if I want to move me from where I'm at right now over to say the right side of the screen and then up to the upper left, 
and then back to where I was. All right. See, that's kind of the effect I want to be able to have. And then the other thing is if I want to be able to flip me around around the, the vertical axis, okay, I can't do too many of those. I get a little dizzy. But if I want to flip me around, I can do that in some software packages, but I can't do that really too cleanly in Camtasia Studio. Now, what I can do is I can flip around some annotations like callouts. So if I want to say take a callout and use a picture type of a callout, a sample picture here, a koala. Yeah, who doesn't like koalas, right? So let's take the koala and let's spin it around here, okay? So if I want to take this koala and rotate it around, say, the z-axis, I can do that by virtue of a feature up here called rotation. So if I make that a 25-degree rotation, it'll rotate around 25 degrees. So that's fine. Um, and then if I want to spin it around, say, uh, vertically or horizontally, then you can do a flip of horizontal. Then you just flipped it or I can flip it around vertically as well. But that's basically it. So I can do some of that kind of stuff. But again, if I want to keyframe it, which is to say, have it start in one state, and then over time have it smoothly rotated around, can't do that. Okay, so it's for that reason that I will have to give, let's look at our scoring sheet here, the annotations and callout features, I'd have to give it a three. Um, and the reason is mainly because of this keyframing effect. I can't do the smooth keyframing, although it does do pixelation which is to say that if we were to simulate these ABCs up here in all caps as say that's a password as part of your screencast that you're doing to teach other people how to use software let's say you can do some pixelation so we do that by virtue of a call out and there's this blur effect here where it's over here on the koala right now but let's move it up here to the pat where our simulated password is in there, so we're able to blur that out. So at least it does that, and again, not all screencasting software allows you to be able to do that kind of a thing, and Camtasia Studio does have that feature, so that's good. All right, so overall, what do we got here? We got four, two, four, and three, uh, three and a quarter. So basically around a three for the overall ranking for Camtasia Studio. All right, so that's about it for now. In uh, the next episode, we'll be looking at ScreenFlow, which we're going back to a Mac environment, uh, and we'll take a look at that and how that all measures up relative to Camtasia for Mac and how rel it measures up to some of the other software that we'll be looking at. All right, so that's it for now. This is Mel Aclero, Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online and web ready. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you go ahead and click the subscribe button above, and if you hit me on my blog, click the subscribe button below. Talk to you next time. Take care.